terms of your gathering and foraging and that sort of thing. And you need to basically to do this now rather than getting into armed revolt because the armed revolt is a trap at this point. It's premature. If things like um, earth changes did not appear, it would still be premature because you don't have the mass of individuals uh, decouchified. You know, they haven't uh, unstuck their butts from the couch enough. They haven't been irritated enough yet to uh, join the populace uh, or a popular movement in armed revolt against the United States as, a, uh, as members of and citizens of these United States and if you don't know the difference between the two you're too ill-educated to go on out and get involved with the armed revolt don't be a sap you know those days are over they have the internet there's no damned excuse not to google this shit and find out what I'm talking about and also that's the the other thing there's no excuse not to google and check and research the prompts that are coming from everybody to any form of action. So you may think I'm wrong. You may think that this is exactly the time. Uh, although, you know, historically winter in the in the northern hemisphere is not the time to begin any kind of armed insurrection, nor is it the time to uh, really engage in warfare unless you're good at it in winter winter battles. And then it can be very good for you. However, um, understand that uh, as a citizen of these United States, you are facing the United States and it has at its disposal the most um, horrific war machine ever created on this planet subject or er, second only to the capability of the breakaway civilization which may also be participating with the minions to some degree we just don't know their um, agendas are not necessarily uh, as aligned as many people might believe so um, that is a uh, basically my little um, sermon here or, or word of caution uh, as a martial artist, um, I'm very sure <laughs> from years and years and years and years and years of study and the study of my enemy uh, that now is not the time for action. And uh, especially when I know my enemy desires that action to occur. And I'm instantly suspicious, you know. It's like instantly, as soon as government denies it, I know it's true. And as soon as government says it, I know it's false. And under these conditions, if, if there's uh, anything like um, a feeling that you get in your gut, hmm, well, I'd pay attention to it because your gut knows these days, you know, there's a lot of traps and, and tricks out and about. Uh, I'm not giving you one of those now. You can validate what I'm saying. If, if you think it's time for armed revolt, um, I think you're really underestimating the situation and the negatives that you face and are very naive about such things. And also, you have to understand, this war, this second American Revolution, is not actually about uh, guns and bullets. It's about thinking. It's about understanding. It's about changing ourselves and understanding ourselves and setting up different views of ourselves and authorities and creating our own uh, authority as self-actualizing individuals. It's about harmonizing within with universe because basically here's what's happened. The powers that be have held us in a couch potato prison too long. Universe doesn't like this. It's a waste of materium's resources. Universe is really pissed. Universe is going to kick the shit out of us so that we'll jump off this planet and become Star Trek kind of guys. Then it'll back off Earth. Then it will have achieved its goal. It will have stopped all of the Earth changes here and let us calm down for quite a few centuries. I don't know how long it'll take to kick us off this planet and make us into Star Trek kind of um, uh, faring species, but that is what is the goal within uh, universe. Those of us who recognize patterns, who look at patterns, and there are those who, who claim that it is a mental illness that can be extreme to the point where you see things that don't exist. In other words, you form patterns in your own mind and go on out and cherry pick facts to fit those patterns to justify your belief that those patterns exist. And it, truly there would be, for someone afflicted with such a um, 
uh, an illness, there would be uh, no way for that person to be self-validating uh, about their own ability to choose a pattern unless uh, that pattern was also recognized by others in universe. Now, I've been able to do this by saying I see patterns and then I can go on out and say ahead of time, these patterns lead me to project the following will occur as part of that pattern or trend. And then you can judge whether I'm right or wrong. And I've been frequently right about the appearance of this language and stuff. So I know the timing at that level. And I have seen some patterns patterns at a very large level that suggest that indeed universe wants us to go on out and do the you know um, uh, uh, prime directive kind of Stargate uh, Star Trek um, uh, exploration of the materium that we have greater work to do than has been um, directed by the powers that be. They've tended to spiral us in into this um, uh, version of hell, and we need to crack that shell open and expand our vision out and create our own vision of heaven. And uh, heaven being simply a word for sky or up there. Uh, not a paradise. Uh, paradise, I think, is, an, uh, is, I won't use the word anathema because that's <laughs> a Catholic specific word, but paradise is um, a very negative thing for humans. It's the couch potatoes. If you ever got into paradise, there's no irritation, there's no movement, there's no reason to grow, there's no challenge, there's no struggle. And that's why at least some of us are here. Um, is just for that struggle. Now, maybe I've been made aware of my own intense level of uh, struggle and uh, my own personal jihad, my own personal awakening as, a, as contention and challenge, simply so I can recognize it and tell others that, oh, hey, dude, that's what's happening to you. You know, uh, you're going to experience these kind of things because you're in this midst of, of personal uh, uh, emergence into, you know, a self-examining, uh, self-educating, self-manifesting. Uh, part of the materium. And we're, we're kind of at this point here where the challenges that we all face are going to be so great that I'm of the opinion that um, I will follow certain advice that comes from uh, uh, Sun Yat-sen, The Art of War. It's even in a curious way found in one of the Old Testament things. And basically what I'm going to do is allow uh, universe to provide the opportunity for my enemies, those who declare themselves my enemy, to defeat themselves. And in the meantime, I'm going to, as a, a Taoist or a yogic uh, practitioner walking my talk, I'm going to attempt to create those conditions that will mature at that same time such that others uh, will be affected and changed in a more positive way because of those small things that we do now. And the small things that we do now are learn which edible grasses are available. Uh, you know, learn how to use lichens as uh, antifungal, antibiotic uh, material. Uh, learn how to feed people. Learn how to grow food. Learn how to provide shelter quickly. Uh, learn how to provide uh, heat off of waste material. Uh, learn how to deal with um, health individual uh, health care for individuals. Learn how to use uh, foods and other plants and stuff as calming agents. A lot of people are going to be in shock. And so as we do this, that's how you go about um, taking the dogs of your enemy and converting them into basically your pack. And it's a, uh, uh, there's this funny thing, there's this, um, there's this really huge festival coming up in uh, India, the um, uh, Kumbha Mela. Uh, Mela means fair or festival or gathering. Uh, I forget what, oh, Kumbha means like a pitcher or a um, uh, container. And the festival is all about the dropping of these elixirs in this battle between the gods and these demons over this elixir of immortality. And really it was the elixir of uh, energy in mortality, not immortality, but uh, because the gods and everybody had gotten exhausted creating all of universe and, the, and gotten in themselves into a wasted state, and so they needed to uh, pick me up. And so it was like their version of CoQ10 or, you know, a, a real good meal. And uh, they, so they get this elixir, and in the battle with the demons, they had to get the demons' help to create the stuff. Now, in the process of creating the stuff, well, let me stop and say that in the, in the battle, there, there were like four drops that fell on the planet, and that's where these festivals are held. And one of these things is showing up here pretty quick in uh, February. Lasts for about a month, and this one is a 24-year 
uh, festival. So this is a Maha Maha, a grand, grand, or great, great uh, Kumbha Mela. Um, and uh, there should be tens of millions, hundreds of millions of people there. In any event, though, um, my point in bringing it up is that uh, this is where the story of Siva's dogs or Shiva's dogs comes in, because uh, uh, in the process of making this l elixir of energy in to be granted into gods in the, their mortality, um, they had to churn the primordial ocean, and up the very first thing that came up was this really nasty poison. And this really nasty poison was going to... Uh, cover the earth and destroy everything. And so uh, there was one of the demigods, uh, this fellow, uh, one of the top demigods anyway, um, uh, Lord Siva or Shiva, uh, who at that point, um, up until that point actually had been rather nondescript in, the, in his evolution as uh, one of the gods, but he decided that um, he would take upon himself the pain and suffering of eating all the poison in order that the earth might be saved. And so this was the penultimate uh, description of sacrifice. Now what's really curious about this, of course, is that it replicates the many aspects of the Nemo's uh, story about how the firstborn of the Nemo's uh, creations here on the planet Earth uh, got off on one of their spaceships, went on out, came back, crashed it to the earth, and created a global uh, environmental catastrophe. And the descriptions of it are, are of that within the Dogon language, and they're in Mali, by the way, currently being slaughtered by everybody right and left. Um, but the Dogon's descriptions um, uh, of this replicate the uh, descriptions in the um, of the story of the... Uh, uh, Kumbha Mela and the fight over the immortality elixir because of the um, uh, nature of what was done then. One of the Nummo was chosen to come back and cleanse the planet and he came up with this particular approach. But in any event, the Lord Shiva and Shiva's dogs, in the Hindu understanding, uh, Siva or Shiva uh, consumes all the poison and the earth is saved. And uh, at that point, the Materium, um, uh, Dhamma, the ultimate truth of all, uh, is granted grants a boon to Lord Shiva above all other gods. And that is that they considered that this act of consuming the poison, in spite of all the other aspects, because Shiva's not known for being a good guy, and he's frequently cited as, you know, their version of, uh, many people from the West think of Shiva as the uh, version of Lucifer or the devil or whatever. And he's often associated with skulls and, and death and all of that. But the Dhamma decided that it was the ultimate act of love. Uh, the eating of the poison, the taking of the poison uh, for all life, existent and not. And so uh, it decided at that point a boon was granted to Lord Siva above all other gods that um, all beings that sacrificed would do so for love. And there would never be a uh, personally generated sacrifice in the materium for anything else. And so all of these were honoring um, Lord Siva, and so Dhamma said that, you know, all sacrifices thereafter would be known as Siva's dogs. All sacrificers. Uh, those who willingly accepted the pain and suffering of others uh, in order that that energy might end there and go no further. Because, see, that's part of the deal. You can't uh, be a martyr. You can't accept the uh, kill yourself, for instance, in a bad frame of mind because you just propagate from the Buddhistic or yogic or Taoistic viewpoint. You just propagate bad energy out there. And so a true person of sacrifice ends the energy right there. They eat the pain and suffering of others and end it there. A Gandhi kind of an approach. Now, I'm more of a martial artist, so I might be a little bit mm, uh, less kind, uh, less um, willing to take the sacrifice without uh, a little bit of education for those that uh, were attempting to be um, malicious about it. Uh, but in any event, uh, nonetheless... <laughs> Okay, I'm going to shut up now. It's been going on some time, and I've got to get back to my exercises. Um, and also doing the dishes here. Uh, now isn't the time to get into arm revolt, guys. It is the time to wait. It's the time to work on yourself every day. Uh, you know, hide any intent you may have. Control yourself. Exist in self-discipline. Uh, confront everything in the now. And uh, be advised that earth changes and everything will change our entire lives in a very few few short months and you'll know by the first of june if i'm wrong or not and it certainly wouldn't hurt you to even if you had the idea for an armed revolt to wait for good weather and i don't think it's necessary anyway i think these are information wars not physical wars although they want it the bad guys want it to be the otherwise and curse them for that and curse them for all the unnecessary deaths and the stupidity that they've invoked on all of us. And the universe would have it otherwise not, because we must 
You know, I mean, it's one of those needs must as the devil drives. And we've been driven to this because the universe wants us to understand things a certain way. So uh, my own personal motto is that I'm a dog who sits in his repose. I'm a dog who chews his bone all alone. I'm a dog who knows the time is not yet, but there will come a day when I will bite him by whom I'm bit. Thank you very much.